You know, first of all, Dave, I want to I want to thank you for taking time out and joining us on the show today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Dave, you know, it, it's pretty standard on our show. Uh, we start off by asking our guests how they broke into what they're known for. And in your case, it's something, you know, I'm extremely jealous of, and that's being able to fish for a living. How did you work yourself up the ranks and, you know, become the captain of your own vessel? Uh, you know, I did it old school. There are many members of the fishing industry, you know, whose fathers were fishermen and their father before them and so on and so on. Myself, my dad sells insurance for an insurance company. I actually owns a company nowadays, but, um, you know, I just had a passion for fishing. And, you know, that just started with fishing with a bobber in the middle at the pond. And, you know, as I grew older, I, um, you know, started to work in the, you know, charter and potty boat industry uh, in my teen years. And then as I progressed a little older in age, I got into commercial fishing. And from there, you know, I, I worked on deck, worked my way up into the pilot house, run another guy's boats as captain, and then eventually saved enough money to buy my own boat. You know, so let's fast forward to the present. And, w- and when I say this, know that there's just a little pun intended, you know, a cheesy one nonetheless, but how did you get hooked up, I guess, with National Geographic to be a part of the uh, the Wicked Tuna series? Oh, sure, that's a great story. Um, you know, when, when, uh, when they were in town, when I say they, I mean the production company, Pilgrim Productions, they had a concept for the reality show. They had heard about how we catch these giant tuna on rods and reels. There's literally probably, you know, hundreds of boats in the area that fish for these giant tuna to varying degrees. Um, and I had no idea what was going on. They were there for 10 days. On the ninth day, they contacted me. They gave me the rundown. They said, hey, we're a production company. We get an idea for a reality show. We've interviewed these 30 or 40 other boats and captains. One thing we noticed was your name came up a lot on these other boats. Mm -hmm. They said, in our business, if people talk about you, you might might be somebody we want to interview to be a part of this thing. Um, You know, they said, are you interested? And the first words out of my mouth was, is there a check involved? (laughs) Of course. (laughs) I mean, that's what I do with my boat, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? uh, you know, if they wanted me to do something with my boat, I expected to get paid to use it. So so who helps you out on there? Who helps you uh, out on the water? I mean, how many people are part of the hard merchandise crew? Uh, well, we have my mainstay is my nephew, Jason Menster. He's like my first mate, if you will. And then on occasion, my son um, is seen to come with us. Now, he's always been my good luck charm for those people who have watched the show. He would come on occasion. We always catch a fish on the days he comes. Now, this season, season four, which is without a doubt the biggest season of Wicked Tuna yet, um, you know, my son is on the boat for half the season with us. He's been between, you know, he's on his college break in the summertime. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that being said, for those who watch, they know he's my good luck job, and I have him on the boat for half a year, and, you know, his luck pays off. Uh, but, you know, without a doubt, though, this season is the biggest season yet for the simple reason you know, we, we had the best fishing for giant bluefin tuna in Gloucester that we've had in about a decade. Oh, wow. Congratulations on that. The show yeah. gets a lot of fish. Did it take or does it still take any kind of getting used to having cameras on the boat, follow, you know, following your every move? Um, actually, no. You know, on, on the boat, it's kind of easy. Uh, you know, those guys are professional. A, a lot of what's done is uh, done with, you know, they have uh, mounted cameras that are mounted on many different places on the boat that... They just run all the time and collect everything. And then, you know, when some some of that unexpected action happens, that's when he jumps up with his handheld camera. But, they, you know, it's actually, it, it didn't take long, maybe a week or two to kind of get in the groove with the whole process. So what about the other captains on the show? Is there a lot of uh, interaction between each other during the bluefin season? Is there a respect given to each other of, you know, you stay out of my water and I'll stay out of yours or it's wherever they're biting, you know, you're going? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we, we try to be respectful and we try and work together because we're all out there, you know, we're all going to make a living. But ultimately, with these fish being worth so much money, you know, thousands of dollars per fish, or on a rare occasion, tens of thousands of dollars a fish, with fish worth that much money, uh, you know, the elbows go up and people get <laughs> hungry, you know what I mean? There you, you go. can't help it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, every person I talk to always asks me, you know, the same question, you know, why are bluefin tuna worth so much? So, Dave, you know, why are they worth so much? 
Well, you know, it's a simple reason. They, they are definitely, um, these giant bluefin are what's preferred for, you know, sushi, for, you know, eating the raw fish. Now, generally, the Asian market is, you know, the, the gold mine market. That's where we get the high prices just because there's such a high demand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what we've never really touched in the show is, you know, people eat sushi in this country, and there's a, there's a pretty decent um, domestic market for bluefin tuna. The problem is, is, you know, once we start to catch a lot of fish, the, the price in the U.S. market drops really, really quick. Um, so, obviously, we're always hoping to get those real high-quality fish to the sushi market, to send them to the Japanese market where, you know, that market seems to never slow down. They just want their sushi over there. Yeah, it's not all about the poundage, right? It's, it's about quality. Absolutely, yeah. Each fish, now even though on the outside fish look uh, the same, on the inside every fish is an individual. And the quality of the uh, meat that's on the flesh, that's on that fish, really depends on what that fish has been doing and mostly feeding on in the few months before we've caught them. So it's, it's key to have a fish with a very high fat content. And then on top of the fat content, there's subtle differences in the color of the flesh. You know, whether it's a pale red or a rosy red or a nice bright red color that, um, you know, and that has to do with, again, what the fish have been feeding on the few months that I've, before I've caught it. So, you know, you have these certain scenarios, they kind of grade fish with an A, B, and C based on their size, based on their color, and based on the shape and the quantity of the fat. And, you know, through this grading process, you know, you're looking for an A all across the board, and those are the fish that are going to be worth the top dollar. You know, since the start of Wicked Tuna, do you see more of a of an interest in people seeking the money, like it's simple to land these fish, like they just think they can go out and do it? <laughs> well, you know, that was a big fear. It was funny. You know, the first season we did this, a lot of other guys in the industry called us sellouts and were selling our soul to the devil, mm. you know, for that reason. They thought all of a sudden there was going to be a million guys out there talking to these fish. The reality is, if you look into it, to get into the bluefin tuna fishery, and you yourself could, as long as you're willing to throw down probably the bottom line for a, for a boat like mine, not even a fancy one, you're looking at spending 100 grand or more wow. to get set up to go, right? Yeah. And then you have to catch fish. The phenomenon that we have seen, and it's been uh, fabulous for the local community of Gloucester, Mass., is people look and they see they can go on a charter. And there's lots of charter boats in Gloucester. And for a reasonable amount of money, people can hire a charter boat and get out there and go fish with any one of the, there's, there's, there's tons of great captains in the city of Gloucester. And they all know how to catch these giant bluefin tuna. And that's the cheapest way to get the experience of catching one of these fish. Now, now do you offer any kind of charter service throughout the year for fans of the show who want to hang out with Captain Dave aboard the uh, Hard Market? Absolutely. Night? do we do because the logistics of filming the show um i only have a few months now but someday when the show ends i'll have a lot more time to charter but if people are interested in chartering they can check out my website fc is in fishing vessel hot merchandise.com you know we have you know all the information about charters the time of year we do it and, uh, you know, as well as any shirts, hats, or hoodies you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. So season four of Wicked Tuna premieres this Sunday night on the National Geographic Channel. Are you doing anything to celebrate the premiere? You know, any kind of party to welcome in the season opener? Oh, well, actually, yeah. I mean, we're in Boston for the network. It's a big promo event. Um, you know, we're talking to radio stations around the country. Some of it, you know, I was in New York City doing some TV interview on Fox and Friends and on the Ed Show on uh, MSNBC. And, you know, personally, on a personal level, you know, our family, Sunday nights, um, you know, these nights have been, it's kind of been like the Super Bowl for us. You know, our whole family gets together, we bring a bunch of food, we gather around and watch the TV and watch the new episodes of Wicked Tuna, because even for guys like us, we don't see the show in advance. Sure, we film it all summer, but, you know, until Sunday night is the first time I'm going to see episode you know season uh episode one of season four you know that brings up my last question for you what's it feel like to be a star now do you enjoy being recognized in the public you know signing an autograph here and there um yeah i mean that stuff makes me happy um you know because not that 
I ever expected it. I mean, I'm still just Dave the Fisherman, but when I take the time to do that and shake somebody's head uh, and see the smile on their face, you know, and just like some of the other stuff, you know, the charity work we do, I've done a lot of work with the Wounded Warriors Foundation and taking those soldiers out fishing, um, you know, stuff like that. It has nothing to do with money, but to see, you know, the genuine thankfulness on those people's faces and to see the smile, it makes them happy. You know, what can I say? That just makes you feel good on the inside. Yeah, man, Dave, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. I want to make sure everyone tunes in uh, to the premiere of Wicked Tuna this Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on that geo. Dave, it's been, a, it's been an honor talking to you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's right. It's the biggest season ever. So be sure to tune in. Radio Show. Show.